It's time to go. We're getting off this mountain, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day five. Today's all about finding a good burger and an adult beverage and recharge and get a little pampering in for the snowstorm. Would you say it's been well earned? It has been very well earned, especially last night. Did you show them your feet yet? Uh, yes, they have seen uh, the skin removal. Before this trip, what was the most days you've done on your back? Uh, shoot, probably like three. So five's a good, that's good, man. Yeah. It's long. You earned your merit badge. You earned your uh, back. Have I earned it? Merit badge. And you earned your 10,000 foot merit badge. And I can bugle. Bugle merit badge? So I'm getting. You're going to be an Eagle Scout by the end of the day. So we're, we're taking the easy way out with the four wheelers, um, getting down off the mountain. And then uh, the snowstorm is supposed to be really bad. We're going to check the weather once we get into town, but they're calling for seven inches of snow, nine inches or uh, nine degrees being the low. Apparently that shuts the elk down. That also shuts my uh, whole system down. The bikes that we rode in on, um, we're going to just gravity ride those down. And since we've uh, we've got more guys here, it's a little bit easier to get gear down the mountain. But anyway, we're going to take you guys into town today and have a little adventure. A little pampering. Maybe get a shower, you know. Shower after five days might be good. This is what a sudden storm looks like in the mountains, Colorado. My truck is covered with stuff right now. It's already starting to get ice on the windshields. It was 80 degrees yesterday, mind you. And this is actually pretty dangerous right now because the trees can fall over. If we were up in the mountains right now, there would be so much deadfall it would be severely dangerous. And we even had a live tree fall just a minute ago. This live aspen tree just cracked over. It is sitting on top of our, uh, our trailer, the born and raised guys trailer. So it's thin at the top, it's damaged it. And uh, before we can go back into the woods, we're gonna have to get a chainsaw and cut through all this. So it's not good. Really scary part is we ran into some guys when we were coming off the mountain yesterday that were fans of Born and Rays and the Hushit guys and we were talking with them and they were going in as we were leaving. Oh my God. I seriously pray for them right now because it's gonna be one hell of a time on that mountain just trying to stay safe, try to stay warm try to stay dry. Imagine a tent, our little mountain tents and this kind of stuff up on top. And we're 3,000 feet below where we were. Up there, it's gonna be so cold. It's gonna be blowing sideways and snowing way more. Whew. 
so glad we came off that mountain. This is wow. This is crazy. Dude, look at the roots. Just pulling that thing out. Y'all, this storm is legit. Look at that tree. I really do too. Bad stuff. You think we're gonna get to hunt again? I'm not sure, man. I, at this point, I really don't know. I don't know how the roads are gonna be like getting back onto the mountain. I mean, this is in town, down low. I know. Like, and all these trees are like this. Whew. Well, we're off to get breakfast bags get recharged but we may run into a roadblock here this is probably the worst windstorm i have ever seen that's not like a tornado 100 it's just a mountain storm dude this is not good all these beautiful aspens and birches just knocked down that sucks gosh dude they are all knocked down. Oh, not good. No taco bueno. Good day, everybody. We've made it through the storm. Uh, the town is just cleaning up now. It was a big one. We had to come off the mountain. Today, we are going back into the wilderness. Um, hopefully, we can get up to where some elk are. The roads could be blocked with trees. We just do not know. But we've, uh, we've had a nice little stay here. Got an Airbnb. Kind of get to hang out a little bit. Uh, I haven't had my big camera with me, the camera I'm vlogging on right now because it's been so heavy, I haven't had room to take it in my pack. I figured before we go back in, just give you guys a little introduction to uh, the Born and Raised uh, crew and also uh, Hushin, who's been hunting with us, but they're about to take off to Utah. Case. Hey there, what's, fishing freaks. <laughs> what's happening? What's the, what's the deal here? It's just kind of a sad day. I don't, I don't even really want to talk about it, but we have to. We have to go our separate ways. The crew's dividing. We're splitting. Splitting. I didn't really get to tell the backstory of when we first met. Oh, you didn't? That day. Yeah. But uh, me and Casey met on the world famous Lake Fork, many, many moons. Lake ago. Fork, yeah. I like before what? I even had a channel going, I had like a GoPro Hero One. I was kind of messing around. You came down to Texas. Yep. With Ed Bassmaster. Ed Bassmaster. Uh, you guided Ed one day. Yeah. You were guiding, right, for Ronnie? Yep. Yep. So you guided Ed, and then we went and had dinner that night. We didn't mean you didn't actually That's fish. It. We just That's went and it. had dinner. But you were getting YouTube going. Yep. Oh. And you were like, dude, you should you should start a channel, man. It nice, might be something man. good for you. Dude, that was eight years ago, and now look where you're at. Yeah. Look where we're both at. We're out here meeting in the mountains. Just hanging making, out in the woods. Making yeah. home videos together. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty cool backstory. Um, the Hushin guys, they've been with us this whole time. And you guys are now going to Utah, yep. right? So you can hunt with your boy. Yep. My son has a tag that starts on the 12th. And so I can go on archery hunt for the next two days. Hunt slash scout for him. And then we'll gra go grab him and hunt with him. But I think you guys are going to go get on some bulls today. That's what we're going to do. This last chance. Um, this is where we're going to part ways. But... We're going to meet up It's not goodbye. Point. It's not goodbye. It's just until later. Just until later. We're going to maybe do, I'm going to say, maybe a mountain mule deer hunt and <sighs> trout sure. fishing. Yep. How about that? That's going to happen. Okay, if you want to see that, bass let us know in yeah. the comments down below. Or we can go bass Rocks fishing. Giant. 
the point is, we've got good outdoor friends out here. Definitely. Uh, make sure to go follow these guys. And, um, you know, Casey had a part of me getting started in YouTube, so pretty big deal. Is it too late to ask for something? <laughs> it's a little too late. We've surpassed that. Good try. Why you Look what up, you got. Oh, man, it's been great. It's been, uh, it's been quite the adventure from uh, hiking out camping on the back of a mountain to uh, camping in a jumping jack to ending up here at this Airbnb with the boys. Which was a nice little addition. <laughs> wasn't terrible. It's goodbye no for now. No pressure, Justin. You need to get a bowl though. My first yeah. one. So I've been hearing so confidence. many stories. I've gotten, you know, I've gotten more confident just hanging around you guys. Yeah. Just hearing I all like the tips yeah. and tricks. Sweet. The uh, structural integrity of the trailer has been compromised. <laughs> yep. <but laughs> let's see, yeah. Uh, let's see what you we got, got some here. You've got daylight. You've got daylight through out of the inside. Yeah. We're talking possible spray foam, maybe? I don't know. You but think that's got... going to leak? Yeah, that's definitely. Come around here, I'll show you. Yikes. That was the tree <laughs> that fell on it. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, in the innards? See, you can. You got a pretty oh, good yeah, yeah. view through there. I don't know how you fix that. Uh, yeah, maybe some spray foam might do the trick just to keep spray water foam. out for now. Just to put in like a sunroof panel? Maybe, yeah, maybe put in an extra. No mountain houses were harmed in this Nothing. act, which no. is good. Zero amount of mountain house was harmed in the middle of this tree fell. But still not awesome, so, but we're gonna pack up here. We're gonna head back to the mountains. We weathered the storm. We are all super glad that we were not out there yesterday. I guarantee oh, that. Oh, yes. That was bad. It was bad, but. Was brutal. Uh, Look at this. Now I feel guilty for not being out there this morning. I kind of, but I'm, I'm gonna get over it. I think I'll get over it. It's Trevor, your brother, is here somewhere. Yep. Somewhere He's doing there. his hair, makeup, and all that. Brushing teeth. Yeah. But Trent and Trevor, born and raised outdoors. Uh, these guys have been elk hunting for how long have you been elk hunting? Your whole, whole life, lives, man. Your whole yeah. life. You yeah, I remember going up. with dad before we could get a tag and packing animals and him shooting them bow, bow hunting. Yeah. That's part of your name. Like born and raised, your whole family. Everybody. Is, is into that. I think that is so cool. I've learned so much. Me and JT, my buddy from Texas, we're, he is elk hunted, he has more experience than me, but um, Trent and Trevor really have, and their whole team actually, have so much experience, so much knowledge. I've watched a ton of their tip videos, watched their first video two years ago when I was trying to elk hunt on my own and I didn't really know how to call. Uh, I got a personal lesson from Trent and now I feel like I can go out and bugle. But I mean, honestly, it. honestly, the, the information's out there, right? I guess so. I mean, it's it just kind of, I think it's a lot of like fishing, like we were talking the other night, just having the confidence of doing it, right? You know, just kind of just it going, is. okay, I don't care how I sound. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to try to stir up something. And you guys brought that out of me. Like yeah. I was definitely a little intimidated to well, do yeah. it. And then you throw something out there and you look like, ah, oh, we, dude, that's fine. That was great. It's awesome. And something really cool that y'all have done is y'all do a ton of public land hunts. Yeah. And you've shown the world that it is it is highly possible to go out there, work your butt off, and you're going to get on some elk. Uh, you just have to keep trucking. Yeah. So it only takes one. Yeah. No, that's, one. that's a fact. That's, that's a fact. That's the key. That so, one's going to happen today. This is our last chance. We're going to be heading back into the mountains. Hopefully we don't have too many trees yeah, in the way. Uh, and we're going to be packing out, we're packing in a little lighter and just probably on our feet a lot. Moving. Yeah, just moving, moving and bugling. Just moving and bugling, yeah. New area, been, I've been to this area before, but we'll see. I don't know, I've, I, it's been good at times, and it's, at other times it's been real rough, so. But after the, we've Hopefully. had some snow, there's probably some snow, a little higher elevation. Big weather change. Big weather change, yeah. post front. Usually post front for fishing is like terrible, but you're saying elk. Usually they get that, down. Yeah, sometimes they have that resting day, like to kind of acclimate themselves, and then, but with this cold weather system coming in, and it's like continuous. I mean, we were hunting 83 degrees, 84 yeah. degrees. That's nuts for elk and at 10,000 feet, you know. It's so turn the rut on. It, that's what I'm hoping, man. That's what we're hoping. That's that's, that's, that's the, hope. the goal. Yeah. To the woods we go. What do we what do we got, boys? I don't know. I'm still trying to back up here. Everything else is open. Everything else. Did you see all that timber that was down? No. So those people at the restaurant when we were just leaving recognized being I was talking to him. That kid actually killed a bull this last Saturday. Um, but anyway, he said, dude, they were out there yesterday and their camper. He said because there was 
you know, they're just in a parking lot, but he said there was trees coming. He goes, you could hear trees falling everywhere. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I'm not surprised. It's, it's going to be a mess. It's going to so. be a mess up here. We got Trevor from Born and Raised in the uh, adventure wagon right now, and we're heading out into the wilderness. Hey, y'all. We've just been talking, learning about uh, this new venture of elk hunting. We've had uh, a little curveball thrown our way. Yeah. Life gives you those. Really bad storm. Um, there's snow all over the ground now, and we're going back uh, to, well, it's not even the same mountain range. It's kind of the same general area, but we're, we're switching up spots. Uh, there's gonna be a ton of trees down where we were. It's gonna be nasty. I, I don't know. What are you expecting up well, here in these mountains? I think we're not really worried about the snowfall, but it blew like a hurricane force winds legit. Um, and I think thousands of trees fell down. And so the big question is, is access. Are we even gonna be able to get to the mountain where we wanna hunt? This type of hunting, I've had so many questions because everything is is new and it's there's more of an adventure around elk hunting. It's not just, you know, hey, go sit in a tree stand and you're, you're probably gonna see a few deer. It's like you need to be, you need to know what is going on with the area, the weather, your gear. It has to be dialed or you're gonna have a very rough time. Well, every step of it is an adventure, right? It's not just the yeah. actual taking a shot, like getting to the spot. That's a big Just part of this, right? Getting now. there, <laughs> and then the hiking up, and um, it's that's what we love. Is I think one of the things we love about it is stick and move. We just we're not afraid to try a new spot, pick a spot on a map, and that's what we're doing today. We're, we picked a spot on a map. We're hoping we can make it there, and maybe there'll be an elk. And this style, the born and raised style of elk hunting, is is pretty aggressive and it is like ground and pound. Yeah. Um, so one thing I noticed, it's like, you guys will take breaks and really enjoy like the experience of being up there, but when it's go time, like when you hear a bugle, it's, hey, every, every hand on deck, let's go, and let's go get this elk. They've been following along on this series for four days. You guys haven't even really seen an elk yet. I know. Um, it's what you it can it's be kind a, of what we're here for a little I, bit. I'm but. sorry, <laughs> we're really sorry. It can be a little discouraging, but, this is real, this we, is real life. We have this phrase, it only takes one, and we have less than 24 hours to get this done. We have an evening hunt this yep. evening, and we have a morning hunt tomorrow. And so, we are driving several hours to a different spot that we haven't tried yet, and we're, we're putting all of our eggs in a completely different basket, because the one that we were at wasn't working, so we'd rather spend a day in some new place than an, than two days in a place that wasn't working. The other thing that's really neat, if this works out, it's gonna be so epic, as you guys have told me since we got here, is it's a rule of eights. Oh. When you're elk hunting in a lot of these public lands and in Colorado with these crazy winds and everything, and I believe we're on seven oh. is what we ended on. Okay, just so you know, that's not a scientific study. <laughs> we we say usually it takes about eight really close encounters before you get one that all of a sudden just works and you get a shot opportunity, make a shot and get a bull. We've had seven. So, I don't know, game seven, World Series? <laughs> Are we at that right now? This could be epic, y'all. Could be. Stay tuned. Like right here, there's one spot that you can actually get through, and it's actually pretty, pretty easy. That one, that dirt shoulder bladed, it was, it was right, right there right on, that, on that, ridge. that ridge. We have made it to our final destination, y'all. Gorgeous up here. Um, just saw a mule deer walking around. There is quite a few hunters up here, but uh, one of the guys was a fan of born and raised, and just gave us a little intel, and they, they've been hearing a lot of bugles. So, man, I hope it comes together. It's gonna be really cold. So we're gonna pack down to basically like one meal uh, and some snacks and stuff like that. And we're just going for it. Just going in tonight. 
hunting this evening. Um, then we're hunting in the morning and maybe if we get on something, we'll hunt in the afternoon, but, uh, I've got a wedding to get to after that. And that's where it gets a little tricky. So I'm going to switch up. I've got a light puffy on. I think I'm going to go to, uh, my heavy puffy material and, uh, just really make sure I have stuff to cover up the extremities. Um, also got a new set of boots that I'm wearing. Um, my last ones, my feet got super tore up as you guys saw and the guys just felt bad and they gave me a pair of their boots, one of their sponsors, their Hanwags. So I've been wearing, like breaking them in this morning, still really stiff, but, um, they bead water like a daggone duck's back. So that should be good. Got to keep, um, the feet dry and I'm also going to wear gaiters in, which are a covering that goes under, over your calves and just kind of keep, keep your system dry, you know? Dry and happy. What you got there? Yeah. Dehydrated. See if you wanted some elk jerky. Elk jerky from Trevor himself. Yeah. From one of your your elk, I'm assuming. Yeah. Throw it in the pack. You might like it. Extra protein, extra fuel. These guys have meat for days. It's so awesome. So I'm gonna leave the big camera at the truck. I'm just gonna take in like the GoPro or whatever, and that's it. We're going from there. We're going super light. We're hunting hard. Hopefully it goes down, guys. Either way. I've learned a ton on this trip. When I started getting into elk hunting last year, I kind of viewed it as a, a lifetime journey, something I'm going to do for a long time. I thought to myself, is this something I, that I can get into? Being growing up like as a southern whitetail hunter, is this something I could get into? 100% addicted. Last year I dipped my toe. This year I'm like waist deep. I think next year I'm going full in, maybe. I don't know, a couple weeks on the road, maybe all of September. I don't know. It's such a, it's a tough time to fish in Texas where I'm from. So it's a, it's a good opportunity to kind of switch over and these guys got me fired up. So hushing guys have left, just born and raised my buddy JT. Uh, we got Jake camera guy and uh, Steve is with us from born and raised as well. So us five guys are going in. Let's get her done. Look at that. How's it going? Decent. Got the zoom. They got the, uh, the focus figured out. Yep. What's the audio like on that guy? Just terrible. Incredible. Check, check, check. We got this. What if I go over here? Yeah. Is this one a Casey Nesla? Gotcha. Got ya. Yep, I think I nailed that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I'll replay it later, but I think I got that. Oh.